Welcome everyone. Thank you for attending this uh, incredible celebration this afternoon. I'm Franklin Boss. I'm an Executive Associate Dean in Engineering. It's my pleasure to introduce our Dean, Dr. Barbara Boyne. She's going to make some initial remarks and then we'll proceed with other points of the celebration. Thank you. I think I need a hat. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, I just look out this. This is very exciting. Uh, Welcome to the College of Engineering at VCU. I'm really excited to share this celebration with you about our Hyperloop at VCU team. The student team is going to be competing in the 2018 SpaceX Hyperloop competition finals next month. That is the best RAM team ever. is they're going to unveil their pod. Now, I have never been to a pod unveiling, so, and I bet the rest of you haven't either. We know what pods are supposed to look like, but this is a pod pod. So we're going to see this first ever event take place. Um, these guys are amazing. There's over 40 students involved. Most of them are from the College of Engineering, but there's also students from business, students from art. Um, students from the humanities and sciences, they've all come together in a transdisciplinary way to solve a problem that has never been attempted before. This doesn't, there's always solving problems when you're in school and that there's always an answer somewhere in a book or online. This one doesn't have an answer anywhere except in these young people's imaginations and the skills that they have brought to the problem to solve it. So this is a first ever. There is no other. It is an absolute first ever. And you don't get to see that very often. In fact, I've never seen it before, so it's pretty exciting to me. Um, these are students that have gone beyond. They, um, they do this morning, noon, night, sometimes while they're sleeping. They are not eating. You can look at them and see they need food. And they are, they're not, it's just incredible. They have taken summer jobs, some of them, to facilitate their being able to do this um, so that they can uh, live and, um, and accomplish their goal. Um, they, they know they can't get here alone, and there's many of you here that have helped them get here. There are faculty, staff, um, other students that have come in and out of the problem to um, give their little yes, no touch to it. Certainly the people that have made it possible financially. Um, I really want to give a shout out to those people because they, um, they are betting on, uh, on the, the future of these kids and they know they're making a smart bet. So we don't have to actually win at SpaceX, although I know we're going to, but we have already won. Only 20 teams in the entire world have made it this far, and BCU's students are one of those 20 teams. Um, only 12 in the United States, so um, that is incredible. The whole rest of the world has only managed to pull together eight teams. This is unbelievable that we are one of those 20. So, yes. <laughs> so you're gonna hear a lot about the competition. Um, the main advisor, Franklin Boss, the one that's going around there in that very cool hat, um, he is going to talk to you a little bit more, but right now, and I, I really want to make a special statement to the students, the president, uh, Pre President Rao, pre our president, he is so excited about you that you know he's going to go watch you present out in California, but he has a few things he'd like to say to you right now. So where is my backup support? It's coming. Congratulations and best wishes to our Hyperloop team for taking us along with them on this incredible journey. Our team of ambitious students from several disciplines, from engineering, business, arts, humanities, and sciences, came together in a very short time and propelled themselves into the final round of the SpaceX competition to build a Hyperloop transport pod. Out of hundreds of teams that entered from around the world, VCU is one of just 11 American teams that made it to the final round of competition. Our VCU students will be leaving soon for SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California, and they'll represent us really well. The prototype that they built gives us a glimpse into the future of transportation for materials and for people at speeds higher than we can imagine. And this is, of course, no surprise, because at VCU, 
we're used to doing what seems impossible to others, to tackling the problems that will move humanity forward. These Rams are making it real. Congratulations, Hyperloop team. You make us all so proud. Shows they're even better than I said, one of 11 in the U.S., even better. These are the best, and I, if he hadn't said, what do Rams do, we make it real, I would have said that for him. So you hear it, we make it real, and we take the impossible, and we make it so that it can be happening. I now would like to turn this over. Where is Mr. Bost? P Professor Bost, would you take the floor, please? Thank you, Dr. Boyle. I'm asked a lot when we uh, mention we're going to the Hyperloop competition. People say, what's Hyperloop? So I thought I'd give just a brief background. It's a proposed new mode of passenger and freight transportation. Uh, and it was first introduced and described in an open source uh, back train design concept by Elon Musk uh, in a uh, joint release from Tesla and SpaceX in 2012. It's based heavily on a concept by Robert Goddard. If you know the Goddard Space Center, he came up with the first liquid fuel rockets. Uh, Hyperloop is a sealed tube or, or system of tubes through which a pod may travel free of air resistance and friction convey people or objects at very high speed while being very efficient. If you'd like to know more, just the authority is uh, Wikipedia. So just put in Hyperloop in Wikipedia. Lots of reference, lots of information. Um, about the competition itself, uh, in order to accelerate the development of functional prototypes and encourage student innovation, SpaceX Hyperloop Pod Competition challenges university teams to design, build, and test an advanced form of transportation. Based on successes of the first two competitions, SpaceX announced on September 5th, 2017, the third 2018 Hyperloop Pod Competition. As Dr. Boyan mentioned, over 300 teams from around the world entered the first stage of this preliminary competition. In late 2017, 40 teams, including Hyperloop at VCU, advanced to the semifinals. These 40 teams were invited to submit advanced pod design packages, including details on the overall design, mechanical propulsion control, and braking systems. Uh, following SpaceX evaluation, in February 2018, 20 teams were accepted from around the world to compete. The Hyperloop team is one of 20 of these 20 finalists, one of 11 teams in the U.S., and the only team, this is the first time they've ever entered, and they're in the finals. All the other 19 teams were in previous competitions. Um, I want to point out who their competition is in the United States. Arizona State and Emory Little, Emory Riddle Aeronautical University, University of California at Irvine, University of Michigan, University of California at Berkeley, Virginia Tech, if any of you are familiar with them, Virginia Commonwealth University, Colorado School of Mines, University of Washington, University of Texas at Austin, and the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Truly an amazing group of students for our students to participate with. So I want to congratulate them. They'll be speaking to the actual pod. Uh, but first, I want to thank our sponsors and actually read off the list of sponsors. Sponsorships are still open. Some of y'all would like to participate. First is uh, the VCU. Uh, VIP, which is Vertically Integrated Projects Program here in Engineering, the Da Vinci Center for Innovation at VCU, Activation Capital, which is the Virginia Biotech Authority, uh, Dominion Payroll, Kaleo Pharmaceuticals, 
Hyperloop Transportation Technologies, the Ken Wright Access Scholarship, AES, AES Corporation, Cantor Colburn LLC, the Wondermans, the Rochelows Dominion and Energy Tra Charitable Trust, Frank Brayton, DST Systems, the Westovers Panera, <laughs> MML Inc., uh, Alan uh, Ann Cuts, uh, Lauren uh, Ketchuk, and the GoFundMe page, which they've raised almost $3,000 through the GoFundMe page. There are some service providers that have provided time to uh, help the robot, uh, robotics uh, build. Uh, the Blue Cheese Robotics uh, Group, Strickland Machine, and Automation Direct Parts have donated parts. So please give all these sponsors a <laughs> Two things before Arthur Chadwick, the president of Hyperloop at VCU, comes up. Uh, we have, over on this corner, some Hyperloop stickers and College of Engineering uh, pencils or pens. Uh, we just converted from the School of Engineering and on our 21st birthday have become the College of Engineering at <laughs> VCU. Most of you've noticed we do have food over here. So, I'd like to invite uh, Arthur Chadwick up, uh, the president of VCU at Hyperloop Clinic. <laughs> Arthur will introduce the team members, which are all decked out in our hats and shirts, and uh, talk about the pod itself. Thank you, Mr. Boston. <clears throat> All right, so let me just go over a little about who we are, just a little more in depth. So we are uh, about 35 plus four members, ranging from engineering, business, and arts. Uh, we're really cross-disciplinary, and you know, there's been over 100 individuals who have contributed along this way, starting in the fall of 2017. Pretty much innovation happens when unlikely people come together. And so using this cross-disciplinary mindset, we're able to combine you know, the greatest minds in their own fields to make something great. So here's the team. Um, why don't we get the leads over here? <coughs> leads and the hardware specialist. Uh, I'm John Naylor and I'm the other controls lead and the software specialist. I'm Harrison Powers, I'm the fundraising lead and accounting major. Hi, I'm Rada Kapadia and I'm the marketing lead and a marketing major. I'm Tyler Brayton, I'm a mechanical lead, uh, or I'm a design lead and I'm a mechanical lead. Hi, I'm Brendan Fisher, I'm VP and mechanical lead. Hi, I'm Patrick Wells, mechanical lead and mechanical major. <laughs> All right, so let me explain a little bit how it, took, how it took for us to get here. So the first time we had to submit an intent to compete form where hundreds of teams submitted uh, from around the world. We had to submit a preliminary design briefing and then we had to submit a final design package where during winter break, you know, the, path, the two weeks before the end of that, we were in the lab every day working on this pod. Right. <laughs> 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 it's 15, stand by for thermal count. We're gonna reveal it. And nine. Uh, let's get 
go into the uh, subsystems of this thing. Let's start out with bricks. All right, so can you guys hear me all right? All right, so um, everything on the, this pod that you see right here was designed around safety. And every single part of this went through multiple revisions. For example, the brakes, um, we originally designed around using pneumatic actuators. Um, however, due to safety concerns, um, SpaceX's um, part and past history of um, teams using pneumatics, we decided to go towards um, electric brakes. So now we're using two electric actuators. Um, you can see one on the end and one in the middle. And um, it's a very simple design that we've refined over the past year. Um, each one of these can provide, six, each actuator can provide 600, 330 pounds of force. So it's a very um, beefy mechanism. And they're designed to brake on the I-beam that we'll be riding along. <coughs> so that's what you see these two brake pads are for. Um, and it's interesting because it's an aluminum I-beam, so we have to, uh, we had to find some brake pads that would work for that. And we decided to go with um, brake pads designed for aluminum um, rotors on sprint cars. And um, that's basically there, all there is to the brakes. Um, like I said, again, everything on this pod was designed for safety, so we have um, four braking mechanisms and we only need two of them to brake. So that's another um, safety factor built into the pod. Hi, so this pod will be traveling on I beam, right? And we needed a way to stabilize that pod so it wouldn't move sideways, uh, horizontally sideways. So we, we, we went through three um, iterations of this design and we wanted to break it down to something simple and just beautiful in itself. So when we designed this, we wanted to use sheet metal and we wrapped the sheet metal. We have Delrin blocks holding the mechanism together and behind here we have um, gas springs that will keep the pod centered. The, each spring um, provides 40 pounds, and we have two per stability, and we have four stability mechanisms on the pod. Again, it's, we, we did this for safety um, and uh, simplicity of design. Okay, so this is the uh, propulsion unit. This has gone through probably the most design changes in our time here. Um, we initially started out with a completely different motor, and then due to back orders, had to switch last second and spend two weeks redesigning the entire system again for a much larger motor. <laughs> um, we went through three different types of uh, actual uh, propulsion units. So we're using chain uh, with sprockets right now to drive the drive wheels, which I, you can kind of see down there. Um, we used to be, initially we we're gonna do belt, but we found that the linear speed of belt wasn't going to be enough to handle what we were going for. And then we went with uh, a gear train design, which we switched because we realized that the structural loading in this system wasn't going to be sufficient. It might tear itself apart. And again, we designed around safety. Uh, so we switched to a chain, which could handle the linear speed, and it wasn't going to tear itself apart. Um, this, uh, this system is free floating in that this mounts to the frame. And this pivots up and down. This is uh, we use gas springs to hold the uh, system underneath the I beam, so these wheels run along the underneath underside of the I beam, and uh, we pull up with about 440 pounds of force. This is that motor there has a, uh, 120 newton meters of torque, and will go 6,000 rpm. Okay, All right, so uh, I, I worked on a majority of the suspension. Um, so you can see here we've got uh, two high force miniature gas springs. Uh, they're pressing up against this uh, pivot bar right here. And then we've got these wheels that can hold up the uh, intended RPM that we'll be going at. Uh, and so all these are able to be in the compressive state while our pod has the weight that it's totally
Okay, so the battery system was also designed on the spot with safety primarily in mind. We've actually split it up into three different battery systems, uh, making everything very redundant. We have six different battery modules that will all control the motor, so there's redundancy in that aspect, as well as having two separate power systems, one for the brakes, one controlling each set of brakes, so that if one of those fails, we can still brake with the, with the other set. Um, in addition, we're also using a uh, low power battery to power our electronics and sensors, and that's using power over Ethernet, POE, so it's the same wire that plugs into your computer that's actually able to provide data and power to all the devices. So in the design process that allowed for a great, much greater simplification and much easier power and data distribution. So across the pod, there are five microcontrollers, four for all the different sensors, and then one dedicated to batteries to make sure that the batteries don't explode. Um, all the microcontrollers communicate with a central computer, which can monitor the health and the state of the pod, and they communicate together to determine if the pod is safe or not. And if it's not, the pod will enter a recovery mode, which if it can't recover from that, it will e-stop the pod and make sure everything's safe. All right, so now we're going to take off the shell and show you all the internal components. Uh, from the renderings to in real life. All right, there you have it. <laughs> switch gears and uh, just talk about sponsors. I wanted to take a second. I'd really like to thank all of our sponsors. Uh, and I think I speak for everybody here at Hyperloop at VCU in saying we're really thankful to live in a community that supports the development of new technologies like Hyperloop at VCU. Um, with the support we've gotten from the community, Richmond community, and from VCU, we've been able to surpass every milestone of SpaceX competition so far, which that's huge. We've been able to surpass every goal that we've set our minds to so far ever since our beginnings just a couple months ago. So, yeah, we, um, it's been an amazing experience um, and we really couldn't have asked for anything else. It's just, we wouldn't be able to do it if it weren't for the community's support and believing in us. And here we are. Uh, and we're ready to go to the end. We're ready to take this. We're ready to win. And uh, it's been a great journey, and I'm really glad to share it with everybody here. So, thank you. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Rada Kapania, and I am currently a rising junior at VCU's School of Business for the Marketing Department. I'm also involved with the Da Vinci Center. And so, you guys may be wondering, why would a non-technical student want to join Hyperloop? Let me tell you this, joining Hyperloop at VCU has been one of the greatest decisions that I've made so far in college. Um, there are so many reasons, so I've narrowed them down for you guys. So let me tell you why first. So first, I was given the opportunity to work with students and faculty members in the School of Business, the College of Engineering, the School of Arts, and the College of Humanities and Sciences. And this truly simplifies, this truly um, exemplifies the partnership between all the schools. And everyone has been very supportive, resulting in me having a great, amazing, eye-opening experience. Second would be my professional and personal development. So I got the opportunity to work with experts in various departments um, and learn and apply all the strategies that they have talked about, especially for our social media marketing, because that was our main avenue. And lastly, we couldn't have done it without um, the Richmond community. So let me ask you a question. Please raise your hands if you guys knew what Hyperloop was. 
Um, sorry, sorry. What Hyperloop was last year, this time of the year. Okay. Well, we made a sponsorship packet. We have our social media marketing. We also have met face to face with many individuals, resulting in effectively communicating what Hyperloop is and our organization. And if you guys were looking, many people had it raised in their hands, so it shows how effective our marketing was. So I really want to thank the Richmond community because as a Richmonder, I'm a native, and I grew up in such a creative and innovative environment. And I just wanted to let everyone know that when my teammates and I go to the competition, we are going to portray Richmond, not only, um, yeah, we're gonna portray Richmond. And we're gonna portray Richmond as what it is. It's becoming a cutting edge um, community on innovation, um, innovation, technology, and engineering. And without your support and sponsorship, we wouldn't be here where we are today. So if you guys could please continue donating, we can make this a reality. Thank you so much. I want to talk about the future of us and the future of what impact we have on BCU, College of Engineering, and hopefully the world. Um, Hyperloop at BCU is here to provide a sense of community for all majors and all types of people. We want to be inclusive and we want to promote growth between everyone, personally and professionally. Um, we want to relate in-class learning directly to what the members will be doing in this organization. And we want to promote a culture of students with experienced skills and self-interest. We really care about the passion and that's what's driven this organization. This is a platform for novices to master a task and then learning from the leads and other mentors who would one day become those leads and mentors and then go on to companies like SpaceX or Tesla or the Boring Company. We really want to establish a permanent bond with those companies and really establish that bond with VCU and VCU College of Engineering. Um, lastly, I just wanted to thank everyone for coming. This is a great turnout. It means a lot to me. Um, so I wanted to thank, you know, sponsors, students, faculty, non-students, you know, hundreds of people have contributed to this, and you can meet the team after, uh, after we finish this. Uh, so there's also stuff by the gift table if y'all want to, y'all want to do stuff. And uh, there's one more thing uh, I'd like to say. You want to say? I want, uh, like, uh, Dr. Boyne to say. <laughs> I, I just wanted to make one last comment. I have to tell you, if you guys don't think these kids are cool and that there isn't a full community here really excited about this, take a look. How many of you knew those were two ram horns on the loop? Is Okay, what do we all say when that happens? Go Rams! <laughs> So this concludes our unveiling. Uh, Y'all can hang around and talk with the team and talk with the leads. So, thank you for coming.